Okay, so this talk is going to be an introduction, if you like, to what stem cell therapies are. What I'm going to cover is why we're interested in using cell replacement therapies in general, what exactly we mean when we talk about a couple of different cell types, so fetal cells versus stem cell derived dopamine neurons, and then I'm just going to briefly touch upon a little bit of the data that's been collected using some of the preclinical models of Parkinson's, so some of our animal models. I'm sure you're all familiar with Parkinson's disease, so I'm not going to do an exhaustive introduction. Um, you're all aware that it's the second most, com most common neurodegenerative disease and that the cardinal symptoms, if you like, are tremor, bradykinesia, which is a slowness of movement, rigidity and postural instability, and that there are two main neuropathological features. One of them is degeneration of the dopamine cells, and these are cells in the substantia nigra that degenerate, and the substantia nigra dopamine cells project up to the striatum where they release dopamine, so we get a corresponding loss of dopamine in the striatum. And the second neuropathological feature is the accumulation of protein aggregates, which we call Lewy bodies, in both the central and the peripheral nervous system. I think it's worth mentioning that beyond just these four cardinal symptoms, there are a range of other symptoms that can arise in Parkinson's. These can include things like neuropsychiatric symptoms, autonomic nervous system changes, sleep disturbances, and sensory phenomena. So any sort of intervention that we're talking about for Parkinson's, we need to consider not just the ability of this intervention to affect the motor symptoms, but also the impact on these wide range of non-motor symptoms as well. So there are a number of therapies and interventions that already exist. This is by no means an exhaustive list, but just to say that the interventions that are currently available generally treat the symptoms. They don't in any way try to slow the progression of the disease or repair the brain. So the pharmaceuticals that are available, things like levodopa or dopamine agonists, these work very well in the majority of people at least in the early stages of the disease, but they do come with side effects. Some acute side effects, things like nausea, hypertension, or psychotic effects, and also some long-term side effects. So the appearance of abnormal involuntary movements called dyskinesias, or a loss of efficacy over time, which we see in the on-off fluctuations. There are a whole range of surgical interventions as well, but suffice to say that these aren't available to everybody and that in a lot of cases there anybody with any neuropsychiatric or cognitive impairments is going to be excluded from access to a lot of surgical interventions. So one alternative is neurotransplantation, so cell replacement therapies. The idea behind these is similar to pharmaceuticals in the sense that we ultimately seek to replace the missing dopamine in the brain. But what we also aim to do is actually rep replace the lost cells. So we seek to actually transplant the cells back into the brain, the cells that have degenerated. By doing this, we hope to slow or stop the disease progression. We want to repair the overt damage that's already occurred in the brain. And if these cells can survive and release dopamine in a sort of natural physiological way, then we hope to be able to overcome some of these problems that we see with the pharmaceuticals. So both the acute side effects and the long-term side effects that we see. So how does this neurotransplantation work? It's actually remarkably simple. So as I said, the cells that degenerate are the dopamine cells in the substantia nigra, and they project to the striatum where they release dopamine. So we have a corresponding loss of dopamine in the striatum. So what we actually do is literally transplant cells into the striatum 
where they can sit and survive, connect up with the host brain, and release dopamine. So then the question becomes, what cells would we use if we wanted to try out this therapy? And is it possible for these cells to survive in the brain, to release dopamine long term, and to actually improve any functions? So back when scientists first conceived of this idea of neurotransplantation, they first started using adrenal medulla cells because they are capable of releasing dopamine. Now these weren't found to be the most efficacious cells, but there was enough evidence to suggest that there might be something in this. The scientists then went on and considered why not try and get the real authentic dopamine cells. So they looked at this point towards the fetal brain, so the developing brain, and they discovered that you can dissect out a small piece of the fetal brain, it's called the ventral mesencephalon, and this part of the brain is the part of the developing human brain that will become the mature dopamine cells of the adult brain. So by taking out this little piece, they could actually have the authentic dopamine cells that we will all have as adults. Now I'll go on to mention why there are logistical and ethical considerations associated with the use of these cells. But suffice to say that now scientists are looking very much towards continuing the therapy, but instead of using fetal dopamine cells, we're looking towards using stem cells as our starting source for producing dopamine neurons. When a human adult is created, it starts with sperm fertilizing an egg, and this fertilized egg multiplies and it grows. And over time, it becomes larger and larger, and eventually it becomes a fetus, matures into a baby, matures into an adult. When we're talking about fetal cells, <coughs> we're talking about harvesting a small piece of brain tissue from a fetus that's about seven weeks old. And by taking these cells at about seven weeks old, we can take out what are essentially young dopamine neurons. So these cells have already matured to a point where they're predetermined to be the dopamine neurons of the adult brain. They're just young at this stage. So we can harvest out these fetal cells and have authentic young dopamine cells. When we're talking about stem cells, what we're talking about doing is going a few steps earlier. So we're talking about going at the blastocyst stage. So at this stage, you have a cell that's multiplied many times, and you have the small inner mass. And this inner mass is a mass of stem cells. But this inner mass will eventually go on to create the fetus and to create the human adult. So this small group of cells is capable, ultimately, of making all the different tissues in our body. It's capable of making heart cells, skin cells, muscle cells, brain cells. So what scientists have discovered is that you can take this inner mass and you can put it into a Petri dish in the lab and these cells will grow and they'll grow and they'll proliferate. And they have the potential to be all of these different cell types. So what scientists need to do is take these cells, grow them up and then work out how to get this mass, this inner mass of stem cells, turning into the type of cell that we need to replace the missing cells in Parkinson's. So how do we do this? As I said, the stem cells can become all these different cell types. We want them to become neurons. Not just neurons, but we want a specific type. We want dopamine neurons. So scientists look back now to the developing fetal brain. And they ask, how does Mother Nature, how does biology, create these dopamine cells in the normal development? And they look for signal changes. They look as the human brain is growing, as this ventral mesencephalon is developing, what signals are appearing and disappearing? What genetic markers are we seeing turned on, turned off? And then they apply the same technology 
to the Petri dish in the lab. So they have these stem cells in a dish, and now they're applying these same stop and go signals to these stem cells. And by doing this, they're guiding the cells and they're changing them from stem cells, slowly pushing them into being neurons, and then from that point, pushing them being into being the specific type of neuron that we're interested in, the dopamine neuron. So what are the pros and cons of using these different types of cells, fetal cells or stem cells? So for fetal cells, the pros are they're already neurons. So they're already predetermined to be the authentic dopamine cells. So they're already early neurons, and they're already going to be dopamine neurons. And they're safe. These cells, they don't change, they don't overgrow, they don't do anything else. You can take them out, and they are already these young neurons that we want. The cons, however, are associated with the fact that in order to get these fetal neurons, what we need to do is use donor tissue. And this tissue is harvested from elective terminations of pregnancy. So, because we're reliant on these donors, we have logistical issues associated with the availability of the tissue, and we have real quality control problems, because it's different, it's difficult to ensure that there is little variability between the donors, that the cells are viable, and so on. And obviously, there's ethical sensitivities associated with the use of fetal cells. Now, for the more discerning amongst you, you might have noticed that the pros and cons list for the stem cells is exactly swapped. So the pros of using stem cell-derived dopamine neurons are that availability isn't a problem. We can take one blastocyst, and we can plate down these cells, and we can grow millions and millions and millions forever. So availability is not an issue. Variability and viability is much less of an issue because we can test all the way along. We can use tests to ensure that our cells are healthy, that they're developing into what we want them to develop into. So we have much more control over the quality of these cells. And I've put ethical sensitivity into the pros list Acknowledging that there are, of course, ethical concerns associated with the use of stem cells, but relative to fetal cells, they are perhaps less. The cons of using stem cells are that we are basing all of our ability to make dopamine cells on our understanding of the development of the human brain. So we are coming up with protocols <coughs> in the dish to turn these cells into neurons. And we're coming up with better and better protocols to turn them specifically into dopamine neurons. But this raises the question, how many markers do we need to see in a neuron to say that what we've made in the dish is real? To say that this is actually an authentic dopamine neuron? At what point can we be confident that we've created, through our knowledge, the same thing that biology creates in the thesis. The other concern is that when you harvest tissue from a thesis, you know that what you're getting are these fairly mature, albeit young, neurons. When you're starting with stem cells, you're starting with cells that can become anything. And over days and weeks in a dish, you're pushing them towards being neurons. There's millions of cells in a dish and they're all going down the same path. But what if you have one rogue cell, or two rogue cells, in that dish? And what if they don't become neurons like the other cells do? So taking into account that we need to know exactly what's going on, and we need very clear quality control tests to ensure that these cells are safe, and that there's as little variability between the cells as possible, so that we're only getting the cell types we want and we're not going to have any issues with the cells overgrowing or becoming any other type of tissue. So through a whole series of other experiments that have been conducted, we've seen repeatedly that fetal dopamine cells can improve motor impairments and they can also improve some non-motor impairments as well. 
So at least in terms of proof of principle of the efficacy of cell replacement therapy, we know that with the fetal dopamine cells, we can get very good recovery on a number of different aspects of function. But what about stem cells? So in the last few years, there's been an abundance of work done using these stem cell-derived dopamine neurons. Different labs are using slightly different protocols that they've developed to try and make the best dopamine neurons that they can. And the results thus far are extremely promising. So to summarise, the idea of cell replacement therapies is to repair the brain, and it's to try and overcome some of this damage um, that's already occurred, and to overcome some of the problems that are associated with the uh, pharmaceutical interventions that are currently available. Fetal cells are the authentic dopamine neurons, but realistically these aren't going to be clinically applicable in the long term because of the logistical and the ethical issues that are associated with their use. But these stem cell derived neurons are the way forward for clinical application. We still have more testing to do with these cells. We still need to understand what the best protocol is. Are they capable of improving any non-motor symptoms? How can we ensure that they're absolutely safe and that we're not going to get any rogue cells in our batches? But at the moment, what we're seeing is a lot of very positive data showing that they can survive, they can integrate, they can release dopamine, and they can improve motor functions. Thank you very much.